Great. So I'm, I'm Nicholas Machado, and I represent Sustainable Agro Solutions or SAS out in Spain. Um, and so I'm here. Uh, just wanted to say thank you for Andrea for hosting this event um, and giving uh, companies like ours a platform to uh, to show you uh, what kind of uh, products are available in the market to help in this case with coffee leaf rust and other fungal diseases. So just a little overview about who we are as a company. So we are a small uh, Spanish based company out in Catalonia, Spain. Um, we have been in the business over 30 years now, I believe it's 33 years. Um, and we've been producing or formulating our own soil conditioners and biostimulant products uh, that you would use or incorporate into your MPK programs, not to replace them, but to accentuate them and uh, fill in some of the gaps that fertilizers on their own can't do such as uh, abiotic and biotic stress mitigation. Uh, we're a relatively small company, but we have a presence in over uh, 80 countries in the world. Um, and I handle uh, the United States. So I'm the uh, lead agronomist uh, for the company and here in the United States in Hawaii, Florida, and other parts. Um, so what is Coppedex? So I'm sure some of you have, are starting to hear kind of through the grapevine uh, what Coppedex is might not be sure about what it is. So our product is a uh, micronutrient fertilizer pack uh, with a biostimulating effect. Um, so uh, we're trying to hit the, the, the tree from two ends. One, ensuring that uh, we're hitting some of the micronutrients that are usually limited in coffee production across the coffee belt. Um, and so in that sense, uh, we're trying to focus on plant health. And at the other end, there's another component that I'll go over a little bit later. Uh, that biostimulates the plant or tricks the plant um, into activating its defense mechanisms against coffee leaf rust, American leaf spot, and also Cercospora leaf spot. Uh, this product is uh, has a pH of five. Um, it's a water soluble liquid, so you don't have to worry about it um, uh, dissolving in the tank. Uh, it's fairly water soluble, um, and it's usually it is uh, compatible with most agrochemicals that you'd be putting into your sprays, except for a, hand, a couple of things like copper-based fungicides, um, horticultural oils, and other uh, products that maybe have an alkaline or high pH. Um, just basic chemistry, you never want to mix acids with bases because then uh, they'll react together. This product is not a curative, um, but it, it's better as a preventative, but it's not a fungicide, so it doesn't have any direct mode of action on coffee leaf rust or the other two uh, diseases that I had mentioned before. So there's no REIs or uh, re-entry intervals. Um, it is an organic product, it's on listed. And uh, the, the idea behind Cofidac is not to replace completely your fungicide, is to reduce um, the chemical load onto your trees uh, by using a di different mode of, of action. This, kind of, this is a breakdown of what uh, what uh, Coppedac has in it. Um, so uh, it's got iron, zinc, manganese, boron, and molybdenum. These are elements that we've seen across the coffee bell are usually limited uh, in production. Um, and all, most of these that are positively charged ions or, or elements are complexed with plant-based lignol sulfonates. So it's kind of it's an item that makes it more available to the planet. So when we apply it, we know that most to all of these ingredients are going into the planet and having an effect on the plant. The part of, of, of Coppedac that has the effect on the plant's defenses against fungal disease is the plant-based co condensed oligosaccharides, or it's just a fancy term for uh, condensed sugars. And so what that does is it tricks the plant into uh, thinking or it, uh, activates the plant's defense mechanisms, <clears throat> specifically against coffee um, or coffee fungal diseases. So all that we consider um, are te or the technology, the CPAC. Um, and so, as I mentioned before, so we're hitting it from a plant health standpoint and also a biostimulating uh, standpoint as well. And so the sugars specifically in, the pro in, in this product uh, the plant is able to perceive it as a, as a fungus, although it's not, um, and activate a different uh, defense uh, biochemistry pathway 
uh, that allows it to hit these three different uh, fungal diseases. So how do we apply Cofidac? So Cofidac is uh, strictly a foliar. Um, we, we recommend it anywhere between one to two pints per acre. However, um, we have seen uh, the more, the higher the concentration, the more the plant perceives it as a, as a more intense fungal infection and it, it um, activates even more the, the defenses of the plant. So we can apply it all the way up to two and a half pints per acre. Um, this product and most of our products that we have in our catalog or in our portfolio, um, even if we accidentally go five, you know, really uh, high rates, um, even after, you know, applying more than what we're, uh, what, 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 excuse me, what we're recommending, it's really hard to burn the plant with these products. Um, this product is best as a preventative, um, just because uh, when we are, going a little bit over the uh, plant defense mechanisms, this product is activating uh, the, the, the uh, creation of phytolexins, which is a natural plant compound that most plants already produce in order to fight off fungal diseases. So when we apply it before this really high incidence in the field, um, we're protecting the trees from getting new introduction of poppy leaf rust out from outside. Um, we have seen though, when we apply this product, when there's already infection in the field, um, to be able to, one, we're pausing uh, the severity and, and the number of incidents that we have in the field. Um, but the other most important uh, effect of this product that we have to understand is that it prevents the plant from completely defoliating. And that's where we see losses in tree vigor and our, uh, our yields, and then eventually, you know, complete defoliation kills the tree over time. Um, so when we do apply it, not so much as a preventative, but when there already is coffee leaf for us in the field, uh, we are ensuring that the plant, we're pausing the severity or we're keeping the, slowing down the rate of infection in the field and within the plant, um, and also making sure that there's no defoliation on the trees, uh, which will eventually kill it. So, uh, off season, we typically want to apply this uh, at least every month, um, just because when there's no flowering or fruits on the trees, it's less susceptible to coffee leaf rust. So um, after flowering, when we do have, um, when we have fruit on the trees, especially if we're having a heavy bearing year, we definitely want to at least try to get it every 20 to 30 days uh, on, onto the trees. Mm. Usually we recommend anywhere between 80 to 100 gallons of water per acre with this product, but I know here in Hawaii, you guys have a tendency to use uh, lower volumes of water per acre. So as long as we're getting, you know, one to two pints or up to two and a half pints per acre onto the field, um, that's the rate that we want to go to. So if you have a 25 gallon sprayer and it's able to apply on one acre, you know, we still want to apply two pints into the tank. Uh, just going to go over a brief review about what we've done um, in Central and South America and in some and, uh, some data points that I was given uh, here in Hawaii to show kind of the efficacy of this product. So this is a trial that we did in Colombia, um, you know, comparing Cofidac to an absolute control or no uh, fungicides whatsoever uh, with two applications uh, before and after flowering. Um, I'm briefly just going to go over this. And so what we see over time is that we still get uh, kind of similar to the graphic that Andrew was showing uh, between how we, you know, if we're rotating materials or if we're applying uh, to the field, um, that with Cofidac by itself, we're able to slow down the rate of infection within the field just with one product and also uh, maintain that severity uh, is being controlled um, in order to keep the trees alive and, and, and active. Mm -hmm. This was a trial that we did in Mexico uh, with a higher rate, um, with more frequent applications. And keep in mind in these countries, they have uh, less resources to invest in a monthly application. So, um, and they also have a more definitive season, a wet dry season. So they're able to only apply these products 
just before during uh, when coffee leaf rust is the most active. So we compared the coffee leaf rust, I'm sorry, coffee deck with uh, typical uh, copper spray that they use. Um, they use it eight times foliarly and then two drenches compared to a coffee deck, which was four foliar applications. And we can see here, 90 days later um, from the first treatments from uh, both the fungicide or coffee deck that we get complete defoliation um, with, uh, with nothing, with absolutely nothing. But with coffee deck, we're able to maintain that the leaves are staying on the tree um, and ensuring that the new growth that's coming out is clean. Uh, in the same study, they reviewed uh, the yields. Um, it's in metric tons, uh, but it kind of gives you a picture uh, of what we're expecting when we do apply Cofidac. So when we apply Cofidac, uh, the tree has is maintaining the leaves on it, still staying productive, um, and we're able to get better yields than if we're applying just copper by itself um, or absolutely nothing. And another uh, representation here. So Cofidac is very safe. It's an organic product. Um, and we're able to uh, ensure in a safe way that the, that the tree is able to fight off coffee leaf rust um, as opposed to uh, certain fungicides. Uh, in Honduras, we did the same thing with, uh, instead of a contact, we were using, I believe this is a systemic, comparing it with coffee deck as well, um, rotating it in. And you can see here, they're using really low you know, volumes of water as well in these countries. And so when we look at yield, so you see, so and just like anywhere else, you have multiple passes through the field when you're, uh, when you're harvesting. And so when we look at the total yields at the end of the season, we see that Confidac performs a little bit better um, compared to the control or to uh, uh, your typical systemic fungicides. And here again, we see absolute control. Um, it's just complete, almost complete defoliation of the tree. You can even see that, you know, if there's no leaves, there's no food source for the beans. So you get a lot of uh, beans that are just rotting on the tree and they're not even ripening uh, compared to Kafidat, where we get healthy growth. We're maintaining leaves on the trees for, for extended periods of time. Um, and that way we get a better harvest at the end of the year. And so this is uh, some data that somebody here in Kona had passed along to me. Um, and it shows how incorporating Kafirak into an IPM or integrated pest management program, we can, uh, we can increase the efficacy and really maintain uh, incidents at a really low level. And so this happened here in the Southern District uh, with two pints per acre. And uh, so they initially they found it around 2.3% incidence in the field. And so they applied oxidate first at the hot spot, and then they uh, did serenade throughout the entire field a few days later. Um, they did one application with serenade plus Cofidac together, which we we're seeing that they are compatible with each other. Um, and then they did three subsequent uh, applications of Cofidac just by itself. And so um, from this graphic that I was given, um, you could see that even when we apply um, Cofidac by itself, we're still able to maintain uh, incidence or incidence of infection at a pretty low rate. Disclaimer, um, they continue to apply other systemics um, and other mixes with Cofidac uh, afterwards. So they didn't just stick to a Cofidac program, they incorporated it into their program and they were still able to keep uh, coffee leaf rust at a, at a really low level. It's important to get these, uh, these kinds of uh, IPMs or products applied really early on in the field um, in order to keep it at a low rate. Because if we're applying even our product or an IPM program and you have 80% incidence in the field, it's kind of late. Um, so even if it, something's better than nothing, it's still gonna be at 80% and we still get pretty bad uh, severity over time. And so this is just an example of what uh, implementing uh, cultural practices, uh, you know, our products 
And most products aren't going to be the silver bullet that you're looking for. It's going to be really an effort from, you know, how your cultural practices along with certain uh, your rotations uh, as to how we're going to be able to really manage coffee leaf dust here in Hawaii. And so this is just an example of how we can use coffee deck, um, and some other products in our catalog um, while also incorporating stumping to really keep um, infection rates uh, virtually at zero. So when we do a stumping, we can really get you know infection in the field really low, uh, almost virtually to zero. And so if we're applying Cofidac at early stages, um, we could keep uh, re-entry or we could um, keep out coffee leaf rust for longer periods of time in the field. And just, uh, just a little review why Cofidac is for Hawaii. Um, it's an organic product. Um, you can apply this, no special PPEs or anything like that, no REIs. Um, it works on a wide spectrum of fungal diseases, the three that I had mentioned specifically. Um, you know, it's not dependent on altitude, you know, on variety, uh, you know, altitudes, the efficacy of our product. Um, and so we're able to promote, you know, healthier trees <laughs> from a plant health uh, perspective while also reducing uh, the chemical load on our trees. And I believe that is the ultimate goal. Yeah, so I appreciate everyone's time. Um, I think we're gonna take a couple of questions here in person and then uh, we'll go to the Zoom as well.